So choose the statement below, which correctly distinguishes between, oh, so this is multiple choice. So I'm gonna just uh, skip that. Um, let me keep going. Um, um, this is also multiple choice, so I'm going to skip that. And I hope you can kind of see it, that um, if you understand the concept of wavelength, then you're looking for one full wave. Here, this is one whole wavelength. And this is only showing half a wavelength. Really, what I'm showing here from left to right, that's one wavelength. I think you see that. Um, let me keep going. Suppose that D string is vibrated at that. Um, oh, yeah, I, I think I added this because this number is actually randomly generated. And I, you know, for those who are musically trained and minded, I didn't want to give you wrong information. <laughs> for the fundamental frequency, what are the frequencies of the next two harmonics? Oh, yeah, this is one where it's uh, good to know. Um, I like to have people draw pictures when they are thinking about standing waves. I do that in this class. And actually it's a kind of a tougher thing to get people to do, but I do that in physics 4A because with the standing waves, I mean, especially physics 4A, people try to just uh, memorize a bunch of formulas, but the best way to think about standing waves is uh, visually. So we are talking about a guitar string and there's enough a description of guitar string in the textbook that kind of gives you the shape of the standing wave. Um, it's actually like the shape that you saw in, on, in, the, um, in the earlier question. So you actually have nodes at the end, which is why I'm kind of setting down this point so that I remind myself that it's a node. And the shape of the standing wave that forms is basically the shape that will fit in between while uh, minding this restriction that you need to have nodes at the end. So the smallest number of nodes you can have in between is, well, zero. So that's what gives you a fundamental frequency. That's the standing wave that kind of looks like this. And this is a snapshot in time. Over time, this will be moving up and down. So when you draw the shape, some people might draw it like this. So that's the fundamental. Um, and uh, what the question is saying is that this particular shape uh, corresponds to the frequency of 144 hertz. All right, let me just draw the shape of the next two harmonics. So those two next two harmonics, let me do the next one in green. It would be okay, then you go up one note. Um, so I started out with a zero note. So let's see, um, well, let's see what we have if I have one note. So then um, I guess the way I position it, I would have to position it right in the middle. So this is going to be the shape of the shape of the, the standing wave. Or if I, you know, once again, this, uh, the antinodes are moving up and down over a whole cycle. So the full shape of the standing wave would look something like this. So you look at the fundamental there. Um, it's uh, what you are seeing from here to here is half of a wavelength. And with the first uh, harmonic, um, that is the one full wavelength. So the, so the comparing the wavelength here with the wavelength of the fundamental, what you would say is that this wavelength is one half of the wavelength of the fundamental. And this is where you have to remember that uh, relationship I was pointing out earlier. Wave speed is equal to um, wave frequency times the wavelength. So if you are keeping wave speed constant, then these two are going to be uh, inversely proportional to each other. When you double the wavelength, you make the, the frequency half. Or in this case, when you make the wavelength half, the frequency doubles. Oh, so frequency should double. <laughs> okay, let me write that down. Um, so the frequency here should be double that frequency. So 288 hertz. Um, and uh, oh, separated by a comma. So I need uh, both numbers. Uh, next to harmonic. So let me just uh, keep going and uh, I'll get to the, um, uh, the next uh, harmonic. So. Uh, I'm going to keep that there. 
Yeah, I, I guess I'll just do it in different color. Um, let me choose red. Um, so the next harmonic, then what I'm looking for is, okay, I need, uh, so I already did a one note, so I'm gonna now need a two notes. Um, so I'm trying to space them out as equally as I, as I can. So I'm going to have a node here and here. And when I draw the standing wave, it's going to kind of look like this. Um, so really the one full wavelength here right now would be this. Um, so that's one full wavelength. Or maybe a better way to put it is um, in, within this uh, one uh, fixed space with the fundamental, I fit in a half of the wavelength. Now with the second harmonic, I'm fitting one half, two half, <laughs> and three halves. So the wavelength here is a third as long, which means frequency would be three times as high. So the fundament, uh, the second harmonic here should be three times 144. I think I can do that in my head. That should be 432 hertz. Yeah. Okay, so let me type those in. Those should be right, I think. 288 comma 432. We'll see. Yeah, correct. But then I'm curious about one thing, if this is supposed to be ordered. Let me just try, I don't know, just curious. Huh, okay, it's not ordered. I guess you can just answer in any order you want. Yeah, so uh, this uh, does involve a little bit of calculation. And um, I, once again, what I want to really emphasize is that despite all that calculation stuff, it, um, it is at, at its heart conceptual. So I do want to encourage you to answer it by drawing the picture. And um, there's no real formula you have to memorize if you have a good image of the standing wave in your mind. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, okay, this is multiple answers, so I should answer that. Um, correctly describe properties of sound wave. This sounds like one of those reading questions, um, which is why. It says that. Uh, so let me just go through reading each one, saying if it's right or not. Um, so it says sound wave is a mechanical movement of molecules through the air, propagating from the source of the wave. Um, yeah, I'm going to take issue with this phrase, mechanical movement of molecules through the air. Like a lot of waves, there is movement of molecules, but it's not moving through the air from the source to the, the destination. It's, the, it's, the, you know, it's not the physical thing that's moving through, it's more of the shaking. So I'm not gonna select that, that sounds wrong to me. Okay, the transverse component of sound wave in air travels, in air, there's no transverse component because the sound wave in air and actually liquid is a compression wave. So there's a push and pull, but there's no transverse component. So I'm not gonna select that. Oh yeah, sound wave is a longitudinal wave of compression and rarefaction of air molecules. Higher frequency sound waves, no, um, no. <laughs> now, um, as a kind of a higher order correction, there is a slight de dependence on frequency, but um, at the kind of a first step, approximate kind of thing, the wave speed does not depend on frequency, or it depends very weakly on frequency. Sound wave is propagation of mechanical yeah, yeah, vibration of molecules through space. So that's what we call, uh, when we say wave propagation, that's really what we are referring to. So should be right. Okay, question 16. Sound trouble, yeah, this is multiple choice. Um, you can, I mean, yeah, it's about here. Uh, <laughs> this is actually the, the speed a light wave uh, or speed of light. Um, keep going. Human hearing is sensitive to a small range of frequency. Oh yeah. Um, so this is, uh, I think it's something you will actually be able to just find in your um, textbook. And I happen to have this number memorized, 20 to 20,000. And uh, I believe, um, 
Oh yeah, and this one is an ordered list. So if you answer the like this, then this should not grade it incorrectly. And actually, uh, uh, I, I try to be careful when I'm coding questions like this. So I think if you do something like this, it should have still grade it as correct, yeah. Because, um, you know, actually I've tested myself. I can't hear anything at 20 kilohertz. Uh, and when I tested myself with a function generator and oscilloscope, I can maybe hear up to 10,000. Um, I don't know if I can hear to, uh, 15. So something like this. I want you to make sure that system accepted something like this as correct answer because um, you know, it's the idea of the, the idea of the audible range. There are individual differences. So <laughs> um, now uh, it doesn't accept any answer as being correct. There's something that is, you know, too far off. Most people definitely can hear nine kilohertz. I mean, it's super annoying, but um, yeah. So I guess um, 10,000 might be the actually the limit of how far you can go. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I put up 50% tolerance. Oh, which means I think actually uh, 30,000 is also considered correct. Yeah, but 30,001 30, is not considered correct. <laughs> okay, uh, let me keep going. Uh, question 18. Um, human, oh, yeah. So this is actually a companion question to this. <laughs> um, so you should really start out with uh, 20 to 20,000 uh, to the um, correct answer <laughs> in the companion question. So here, really the range of frequencies that you are working with is uh, for frequency is going from 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz. And really what you have to do is um, you have to express it in terms of wavelength. So once again, what you have to remember is that relationship between uh, frequency and wavelength. That wave speed is equal to frequency times wavelength or doing a little bit of algebra or having memorized the, the, all the different versions of this. I know that wavelength is equal to wave speed divided by frequency. So, so, all right, uh, this is what I need to do. I need to do this calculation. I think the hint actually gives me the wave speed. No, it doesn't. Um, all right, then um, you will have to read the section. Uh, actually, for this one, let me show you in the section because it is in the section. Uh, you'll have to look it up to look up the uh, wave speed because it's one of the information that you need to know. And the wave speed it gives is, um, well, I, I think I can actually use a 331. So I, I actually prefer 340, but let me just use 331. So I'm gonna use the number uh, of wave speed being, oh, let me, sorry, let me not write there. I think my video might be obscure in kind of that region, so. Wave speed is 331 meters per second. So what you need to do with that expression, uh, lambda is equal to V over F is, you're just gonna put, need to put these numbers through these formulas. So let me write this down, uh, lambda, and uh, let me do the lower number first, 20 Hertz. So bring up calculator. I have the wave speed, 331, divided by the frequency, 20. So that's going to be equal to 16.55, 16.55 meters, I think, yeah. And let me do the higher end number. So that would be same speed, 331, divided by 20 kilohertz. And that is 0 0.01655. Now, this is what you will see. If you were to put in 16.55, 0 0.01655, it'll say that's wrong, or it should say that's wrong. And that's because um, you need to look at these numbers. I mean, you can also kind of uh, guess this from remembering something about inequalities. But once again, this is not a math class. I don't, 
care if you remember things about inequality. But what I would ask you to do is look at the actual number you calculated and realize that this is smaller and that's bigger. So the range should be, um, so the range given, yeah. So what used to be matching to a lower frequency is going to match up to longer wavelength. So 0 0.01655 and 16. And um, like with the previous question, this has a fairly generous amount of uh, tolerance built in. So if you, even if you were to put in something like this, it should have graded it as correct. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Uh, question 19. Um, suppose on a stormy night, you see, oh, oh, I actually did this question in the other video. So let me skip this one. <laughs> I don't need to do this again. You can watch that. Um, and, you know, I kind of say it all here. Um, I want you to visualize it, you know, when you see the lightning flash, it's a kind of almost instantaneous. And uh, really what you need to figure out is, okay, how long did it take for the sound to travel at this uh, a very finite speed? Question 20. Oh, this is just about um, speed of sound. Um, so Mach. Um, so really what you need to remember is that um, Mach 1 is about uh, speed of light, like speed of sound, <laughs> um, or 331 meters per second. But um, there is a bit of a complication here, which I try to, to um, yeah, I guess I say that in a hint, they do not vary too far from 330 meters per second. Uh, I wonder if I, um, let me try working out the numbers with the 300 meters per second and see if it gets graded as correct. Um, yeah, just give that a try. Um, so if they are moving at Mach 5, what that really means is five times Mach 1, or 300 meters per second. So in meters per second, it should be uh, 1,500, five times three and 100 meters per second. Uh, let me just enter this, and then let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I built in a generous amount of tolerance for this question here, because there's that ambiguity about um, what is that reference number Mach 1? And it does depend on local conditions. Um, now, oh, now for the, um, for uh, miles per hour, uh, so you can, uh, you are welcome to uh, watch this video on unit conversion. I'm going to make it easy on myself and just to use all from Alpha. And just to kind of ease your mind, um, I don't really ask unique conversion questions on the exam um, in miles per hour. So like if you never knew how to convert meters per second into miles per hour, I, like at most maybe there's a one exam question you might miss, possibly not even that. So let me just put that in, 3355. So I mean, unique conversion, it's some, I think it's a useful skill for you to have, but it's not a skill that I would force you to learn. So, uh, so if you just want to use Wolfram Alpha for homework, that's fine. Um, it's, you know, you know how it is. Um, in, like it's kind of a uh, stereotypical thing you people, um, you, you hear people say like, you know, you're learning a bunch of arithmetic in classes, like especially K through 12 and someone asked, when am I ever going to use this? I'm always going to have a calculator. and you know, that's not wrong. Um, in most of the circumstances, if you do need to convert numbers, yeah, you are gonna probably have access to internet and you can do this conversion. Uh, there's a value in being able to do this yourself, but understanding it, especially if you are going to STEM area. But that value, like uh, how valuable is it compared to the amount of pain it is to learn it? I, I think you are in the best place to judge that for yourself. So I'll leave that up to you. Okay, uh, I think that's all the questions. Um, then, oh, let me actually just erase all those annotations. Um, 